We are here at AirVenture Oshkosh. It's the last day of Oshkosh, but still more excitement and fun to go. Today, uh, we're talking with Doc Bailey, and we're standing right in front of the Lycoming booth. So what's interesting that I see is, is people walk by, we're right on the main drag here, so it's a highly visible location. We're in front of Lycoming, a long storied brand here for engines in the USA, and both the aircraft they have out front are light sport aircraft. There is not a GA aircraft sitting out here in this really valuable location. To me, that sends a strong message of support, and Doc and his team at Renegade Light Sport have been the key people that have helped engineer the installation of this. Uh, this is the Thunderbolt engine, I believe. Yes. And getting it on here, we see it in front of the FK-12 uh, Comet. Over there, we see it on the Technum P-92. Uh, of course, those folks did their own job, but Doc has been an essential guy in the American version of getting these engines on airplanes. Let's see, Lycoming, uh, excuse me, uh, Renegade, Comet. Uh, have you done another one yet? Uh, we're fixing to do an amphibian right now, the new BOT Speed Cruiser from Switzerland. We'll have a series of five or six uh, light sport airplanes specifically with Lycoming engines. And I think you're going to be working with C-MAX too. Well, C-MAX is hard to work with, yeah, but we're, we're getting there. A yeah, but I mean, the time. idea is they're looking at Lycoming for that right, for that right, little seaplane. Right. So, so that's cool. How has been the support from Lycoming on this, Doc? i tell you what, when we approached Lycoming five years ago to do this, it was, uh, they were a little skeptical to begin with. Light Sport was in its infancy, and and at the first uh, I got was, son, you know, it's a, we're a GA airplane company. That uh, Light Sport's going to be a flash in the pan. and. It wasn't uh, about six months later, Marla Saboka and uh, Ollie Oliver was uh, knocking on our door and the next thing I knew we were in Pennsylvania trying to figure out how we can make a light enough engine for like home and give a real aircraft engine and a real airplane. So that's kind of interesting, Doc references five years ago, that meant we were only two years into light sport. They could be forgiven for thinking it might be a flash sure. in the pan, we hadn't proved anything to anybody yet. But today, we got only light sport in front of their uh, pavilion here. Now, of course, they still have vast support, much larger business with the GA crowd, where they're deeply established, but it's very clear they're putting their best foot forward here for light sport. Well, I can tell you what, from that day forward, their, uh, their total emphasis and full support, we were flying engines with uh, no serial numbers on them, prototypes so we could do the uh, teardown for the ASTM and the Part 23 inspection. And I have to say, Mike Luxman, uh, Steve Logue, Marla Saboka have given a thousand percent toward getting this project off the ground and into production. These guys are very serious about putting light coming in and light sport. They're full speed ahead and I can't think of any vendor that we've ever had that hasn't been more productive and more uh, full speed ahead on a project. Since they've decided to do this, it, it has been, uh, you know, it takes years sometimes for light coming to bring a new model in. And uh, these guys have gotten a lot of stuff done and a lot of good good uh, uh, modifications to the engine. Like well, the and they're filter. able to do those things too, because here we are in light sport with ASTM uh, approval. Exactly. It's a different animal completely than that part 23 certification on which the whole industry has relied for many years. It's a solid system to make sure stuff goes out good and it doesn't have problems. And, and that has worked for a long time, but it costs literally millions to right. do things. Right. Whereas, and you can't do it quickly because as soon as you make a decision, after you've spent those millions, you've got to then invite FAA in, and they've got to look it all over, then they've got to go home and think about it. Meanwhile, the clock just keeps ticking, whereas here, we can do stuff like that. Well, like this engine now, you have the dependability of the old, like combing, a 2400 TVO with a brand new fuel injection system, with a brand new Champion state-of-the-art dual electronic ignition system, our cross-tube veteran exhaust system we hear is ceramic coated. Everything on this engine, from the cutaway flywheels to the aft single hole uh, installation on the back for the Magneto. This is all state-of-the-art new stuff, just like you said. This is stuff that would probably take them 10 or 15 years to, to do in the Part 23 era, and we've done all this stuff in three years. Yeah, I'm looking at what seems like a relatively simple thing. You talked about a cutaway flywheel. Well, what does that mean? Well, it just got these little holes in it here. It's, right. it's a part of the process they did to lighten this aircraft. Right. This is a pretty important part on the uh, engine, and you wouldn't just make this change right. in Part 23 without all kinds of examination, oh, right. exactly. uh, you know, thousands of dollars just on that alone. And so we're at the part right now where the engine, what we started from, such as the 235, we're in the neighborhood of 40 pounds lighter with a state-of-the-art electronic ignition system, a fuel injection, so much more efficient. We're pumping 124 horsepower out of a 208-pound engine. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty great support there. One of the other things is that this engine 
on this airplane is the only engine that will work on this airplane. Lycomi has actually developed this engine for aerobatic application, which you can't use any other engine we have in the field. Well, before. actually, that, that's, that's the reason the FK people came to us, was this is a fully aerobatic aircraft. The aircraft is a 9G aircraft. Uh, like I went to Lycoming and said, you guys have done a great job with the regular uh, IO233. And the bottom line is we have a client who wants an AEIO, fully aerobatic engine. So they went to work on it. They beefed up the crank a little bit. It took about four and a half, five months for us to do the due diligence of, of they've always done an aerobatic engine. And they said, Doc, if you think there's a, a merit in, in this going out, that uh, we'll make it a fully inverted oil sump system, just as we've always done and we'll put that engine in for you. So this is 001. Uh, we have the other one, the blue one for the Hanson Brothers, 002. So these, this is the first one. The uh, other is the second fully aerobatic Lycoming engine. And of course, we can pick up the phone and order one in about 60 days, we'll get it delivered right to our door. Well, that's pretty cool support from a major company in the GA world that they are seeing the promise and the potential for the light sport aircraft segment, not only to include special engines like this for uh, uh, folks to get upside down in a light sport aircraft, the only one I know of at this time, uh, and certainly with this engine. We've got a couple other great engine manufacturers, Rotax and Jabiru and HKS, that all have ASTM approval. None of those want to have their engines used that way, and they do get to dictate. So, right. like Oming stepped up and said, hey, we've done this before, we know the routine, we know what the challenges and risks are, and we can uh, manage those successfully, so we'll let's go, we'll, we'll do it. And, and see, FK did come to us and said that Rotax just absolutely didn't want to have their engine in any aerobatic phase whatsoever. Sure, so, that's their prerogative, and, and, and that's, that's fine. That's but, all right. Uh, uh, but these guys said, hey, we've done this before. We know how this works. But I think it was a real uh, uh, real piece of integrity or whatever for like homing to come up and say, yeah, we'll step up to the plate. We'll do it for you. We think that's pretty cool. One other thing I'd like to note on this is that we've got another company, another story, GA company. We've heard the name Sensenich Propellers for many, many years long uh, history of doing things. They just announced this week here at AirVenture Oshkosh that they're going to jump in and support light sport very strongly. And here we've got one right on the front of this engine. Well, Don's done that for us. Uh, Don came to us and said, hey, uh, we don't really have a ground adjustable prop to Lycoming. We'll send you one. We want you to test it. They sent it to Lycoming. They did it on the dyno to get the vibration testing. We flew the first one. And you can literally, in about 15 <laughs> minutes, take this from a cruise prop to an aerobatic performance prop and anywhere in between on the, the same airplane. Uh, we, we, we really are looking forward to, uh, and our clients really like that. Uh, you know, you can really go get across country a little bit with a 72 inch prop uh, pitch. And then when you want to do your aerobatics, we'll put it into a 50 and then we'll climb vertical. So you pretty have cool. A, pretty cool. So I guess the news this morning here at AirVenture Oshkosh on the final day talking with Doc Bailey is that GA companies like Lycoming and Sensenich are still very interested and very supportive of light sport aircraft, in fact are ramping up their activities about it. Doc, let's conclude here by giving your web address so that we can find out more about the engine that you've been working on. What is the web address? We can the web address is renegadelightsport.com and you can see the five aircraft that we have, the uh, accessories that we have, the HOA show is of course on there, our light sport repairmen of course. RenegadeLightSport.com, you can get the whole thing right on the website. Sounds great. Yeah, I've got more on Doc's airplanes, on the Comet, on the Lycoming engine, Sensenich propellers. Most of that's available on ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com. Thanks so much for watching today.